Okay, look, there's no fun little hello intro with a musical zinger from the show that I'm reviewing this time. No, lucky there's a family guy. No consideration of the obvious juxtaposition of the theme songs, derision of the lack of sex and violence with the horrifically bigoted sex and violence that feature in this episode, and moment that we're going to discuss. Instead, what you're going to get at this episode is a warning. A trigger warning. We are, as the title mentioned, going to be discussing one of the worst moments of transphobia in Family Guy, and one of the worst moments that I can think of that stand out in trans TV history, at least in regards to how it stands out. That means there's going to be a lot of discussion about transphobia, and showing of transphobic things, with more of a focus on the negativity of that representation than the positivity. So if that isn't what you want or are after, then please feel free to stop watching now. There are other videos on this exact channel with a happier message or a more balanced discussion of intricacies that are not wiped out by some singular moments of severe anti-trans shit that I will be showing. I'd advise avoiding the How I Met Your Mother video though, because that one was kind of the same problem and had like the exact same things in it, so like, you know. Watch the It's Always Something in Philadelphia, or the Friends one. Or the, like, Twin Peaks one. Those are all pretty happy. If you want happiness, go there. So now that that is out of the way, everybody left are those who are aware of the situation. And yes, we're going to be analysing the episode Quagmire's Dad from Season 8 of Family Guy, released in the early months of 2010, which you might recognise as being right around the time that How I Met Your Mother was doing the height of its shit, because, well, I... I think the because is something that is useful to understand. How transphobia and trans representation is very much reflective of changes and attitudes that you can see evolving through the popular media like this. We'd changed from the more confused, curious, but ultimately reluctantly accepted representation that one can see in Twin Peaks or Friends or The Love Boat, and we moved into this one of it being discussed and reviling the idea of being deceived by these trans women. That being a major point that we're going to talk about after we discuss the episode itself. And on the note of the negativity that we're going to focus on here, a negativity that a lot of my viewers talked about not wanting to see, I get that, but it is essential. It's as essential as discussing the positivity. To consider that negativity as well in our broader understanding of transness in media and in real life. The positive can help us see what to do better. It can help us think about ways to view the past in lights that are not just it being bad. But the negative is the stick to go along with that carrot, showing us what not to do or giving us an idea on how transphobic concepts and elements can become rooted in popular culture which is both a development from them being rooted subconsciously in real life and real audiences, and also a way for them to be influential on future viewers and reaffirm those bigotries in younger people. Alright, I think I've justified and stalled enough here for one video. Let's just talk about the episode itself. The episode, for the most part of it, is a situation of discovery, laced with just classical homophobia and transphobia from the moment that Quagmire's dad enters the scene. Beginning with them dancing down the stairs to Nancy Sinatra's These Boots Are Made For Walking, and the ordering of a Cosmo and sitting with their legs crossed, which leads to both Peter and Joe saying how they are clearly a gay man, because the implication at this point that we as an audience are meant to be feeling is that this is a super effeminate dude, and any amount of effemininity is of course what makes you gay as any straight man with serious issues around their masculinity can tell you. I remember the sky was a majestic orange. The breeze was just warm enough that you could wear short sleeves, but, you know, not so warm that you break any kind of a sweat, because let me tell you, I do hate to perspire. But also, that Quagmire is clearly wrong in his perception of his father. That he thinks that this is a ladies' man, and in reality, they are more of a man's man. It's weird that saying a man's man is actually used to describe when a dude is more masculine rather than when a dude fucks men, while a woman's man or ladies' man is used for if they sleep with a lot of women, not that they're, like, more effeminate. Like, the English language is a... it's, it's a strange thing, but it's not the centre of this episode. 
The episode continues in this weird way of every character just not completely understanding or being willing to understand anything, mixing up the gayness and the transness consistently in ways that are not clearly jokes or I'm not sure what purpose they serve. He wants to have a sex change operation. Whoa, I knew he was gay. I didn't think he was that gay. No, no, Peter, he's not gay. He's a woman stuck in a man's body. Yeah, gay. It's totally different. Sounds the same. Well, it's not. Okay, so he wants to be a woman so he can be a lesbian? No, he'd date men. Gay. This whole issue of Family Guy not being that funny is not something I care to talk about because it mostly focuses on the irreverent and rather obtuse way in which the series approaches humour, it being random cutaways and drawn-out moments that are inherently anti-funny, but that seems to be the point of them. No, this is more of a case of people saying or doing things, and it not being clear where the joke is targeting in the comment. Like, the only humour that exists in a lot of this is if we are meant to feel disgust towards Ida Quagmire, the name that Quagmire's dad goes by, who I will still call Quagmire's dad, due to the fact that this is what she continues to be called and doesn't challenge, so that's all the information that I have to go on is. Or that we're meant to agree with the shame that Quagmire feels for their father being a trans woman or the shame that Ida should feel for being a trans woman. There's also the fact that the Family Guy episode makes it like the sex change operation is everything, like removing the penis is included with a whole package that gives them boobs as well, and makeup and hair, which obviously is a shorthand for, I guess, transitioning, but like, it certainly doesn't help with giving cis people the wrong impression that a trans woman doesn't truly transition until the sex change operation when in reality a lot of that stuff comes in stages over a long period of time, and they are trans from pretty much the moment they declare such, and that you should treat them as their gender identity that they want to, unless you're a disrespectful ass, in which case just keep doing you, I guess. That one there can be seen more as a flaw of them trying to shove this whole trans thing into a single episode and cover the entire start to finish in that sort of span of time, in a comedic light, wherein basically they just kind of skip everything that would make it interesting to cis people or educational to cis people about what trans people go through because they need to jump to making the funnies about the trans person. God, what do you think, boys? I'm walking on sunshine, whoa! And these issues that are immediately apparent within the first half of the episode continue to build and will reach the pinnacle in the true moment of this episode that I consider to be one of the worst moments of trans representation on T. A moment so bad that it negates almost everything good, and that makes it almost impossible to watch Family Guy again, or to see any of the people involved in this program without thinking, you were involved in that process. You helped to make this video. How does that sit with you? But it's essential that we see the foundation that Seth MacFarlane and Tom Devaney, the writer of this episode specifically, are creating for us here with that writing, and doing this step by step will hopefully do that for you. And I knew at the start that I said this was going to be a focus on the negative aspect, but I also do want to briefly mention the positive side of this, that of Quagmire and the connection with Ida, which is strained and uncomfortable throughout most of the episode and that Quagmire is trying their best to put on a supportive face while secretly being horrified and angered that what their father is doing is hurting them, and they feel it's at their expense that they're having happiness. Do I want to be happy the rest of my life or miserable? So now you're happy and I'm miserable. I see. I'm sorry you feel that way. Which all builds to a very happy moment that's unfortunately sandwiched between two absolutely terrible moments, so, you know kind of negates the whole feeling there. Meanwhile, though, throughout this episode, our stand-in Family Guy characters, who are shitty people, continue to be shitty people, throwing away the cooking that Ida made because they don't want to eat food that a trans woman has touched, I guess, and I still don't know what the angle of that comment is meant to be. Are we, as the audience, supposed to be thinking that it's funny because Lois is being a bigot and it's wrong? 
Or is it because we are meant to be implicitly agreeing with the disgust that she feels towards the trans woman? This is what I mean about how it's difficult to view this episode even before the worst moments in a positive light. Because the target of these comments, of these moments, is uncertain. And the repetitive way that they keep reiterating the grossness of Ida, the reviling of Ida, makes it harder to see it as anything but Seth MacFarlane and Tom Devaney writing their own subconscious bigotry into the episode, with the consideration that their audience will agree with and sympathise with that message. A point that I think will become more clear when we talk about Seth MacFarlane's comments on this later on. And continually reiterating this point is this comment from the dinner, where Meg compliments Ida, which leads to this scene. I like the outfit you have on. Thank you, Meg. Who did your procedure? Wow, you just burned your last friend in this room, lady. Now, if you know the show, Meg is consistently commented on as being ugly, as being mannish in regards to how people perceive her. And this is, I suppose, leaning into the stereotype that because she looks like she does, that she must be a trans woman, because only they could be so physically unappealing slash unfeminine. An aspect that you might recognise as being pretty horrifyingly relevant in the era of TERFs and trans bathroom bills, which sees cis women that just don't happen to fit an ultra-feminine definition harassed and kicked out of bathrooms, thanks to their appearance getting them attacked by transphobia. I'll, I'll get into the useful ways in which we can understand this episode later, but hopefully that comment by itself plants the seed in your mind that it is relevant and useful to consider this watershed moment of transphobic representation in Family Guy, because it is going to help us see the way that transphobia has developed into the public consciousness, and is coming out right now with the wave of trans visibility in the past eight years. And to go back to that positive aspect, the moments between Ida and Quagmire, like I mentioned, when Ida gets the opportunity to explain herself to her son, to make it clear how she came to this, and we get to see the way that Quagmire has difficulty aligning the fact that he sees his father as a war hero and ladies' man, which, I, I mean, doesn't generally necessarily negate either of those truths. Ida can still be a war hero or a ladies' person, and also a trans woman. It's... She even says how her past hasn't changed, that she's only changing her future. Like, that's literally a comment that she makes during this conversation, in her attempt to explain herself. All I've talked about for years with these people is what a war hero you were. And I was. I'm changing my future, not my past. In general, while this story arc is laced with problems, that being laced with problems does not take away from the core story there about a child coming to terms with this transness, and by the end of the episode, at least, gives us a happy conclusion of Quagmire accepting that Ida has been unhappy and struggled, and that he will support her and love her regardless. Of course, the Quagmire erection joke about how his penis can't tell the difference when he hugs his father is just doing its absolute damnness to destroy any of that goodwill that is generated, but trust me, the goodwill that is generated here and wounded by that is far more utterly annihilated by how the episode ends. See, earlier on, Ida had met with Brian, who, being out of town at the time, was unaware of the whole situation around Ida transitioning, and so flirted with her at a bar. I believe comedy in this scene is designed to buy into our perspective on this as a joke on Brian, that... Oh, he doesn't know that he's going to sleep with a trans woman and we hate him because he's the uptight liberal elitist who uses his progressiveness more as a way to browbeat people into liking him. And so he's going to get what he deserves by being tricked into sex with a trans woman. I, I hate this show with a passion and I hate this episode so much. An episode that I saw pre-transition myself and which undeniably had some influence on the way that I grew to hate myself for how I felt. And one could argue that that makes me biased and subjective about this, but everyone's subjective about any episode, so, you know, just, you take my examples, you take my explanations, and you either appreciate them, you like them, and you work with them, or you think that, you know, I'm just another trans person getting angry about a show that, that, that in the no way I'm gonna be able to cancel, don't say cancel culture, I will, I will, Beat you to death, you say cancel culture. That's not a real threat for YouTube. 
to be clear, I will not beat my audience. All positivity, all nice comments I can make about this episode are washed away on a tide of vomit. Literally. As Brian discovers from Stewie that he has slept with Ida unwittingly, and proceeds to vomit for 30 seconds straight before launching into screaming with Stewie about how he didn't know, and that how could he do such a thing, and Brian thinking that trans people need to notify the neighbourhood when they arrive, a clear reference to that whole legal thing around sex perverts and pedophiles. Ah! Ah! When they move to a new place, they're supposed to notify the neighborhood! That's how it works! He didn't actually move, he's just visiting! Brian then proceeds to wash himself and shiver like he's in one of those film scenes where he's been raped, before getting brutally beaten into a pulp by Quagmire, who hates Brian for a whole host of unrelated reasons. And the catharsis of that moment, of that moment of Brian getting beaten to a pulp, is basically meaningless because it doesn't give us any real moment of clarity or reassurance of the humanity of Ida. If anything, Ida's humanity that gets established in that final conversation she has with Quagmire is completely removed by her relegation to a reaction. She's not a person with thoughts and feelings and a life of her own. She's the disgust of Brian and the violent anger of Quagmire and the biting final remark between the two as a punchline at the end of the episode. Hey. I f- your dad. And that's the episode. Now comes the hard part, where we have to discuss what all this means. And we have already kinda at least mentioned the elements that I want to discuss as I went through the episode. Because I have a severe issue with not just writing exactly what I am thinking at the time and properly spacing out a video essay. Truly a rambler at heart, but the three big takeaway issues with this incredible low in trans representation are 1. The target of the joke, 2. The concept of deception, and 3. How does this relate to the writer slash creator and the audience? On that first one, as you can see multiple times throughout Quagmire's dad, It isn't clear what we are supposed to think of with the jokes, who we're meant to be laughing at or laughing with, and that's a problem. A key part of comedy, especially comedy where the main characters are kind of written to be unlikable and terrible people, is that those around them need to be sympathetic, and it needs to be obvious that the jokes are well and truly on the terrible protagonists that we've come to be familiar with, such as in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. In Quagmire's dad, more often than not, the joke about Ida from the family are just left hanging in the air, are just repeated bigotries with no real attempt to turn around the joke back on the family. It leaves it less as a clear situation of them being the problem, and that Ida is the slighted party here, and more that how they are, how they react, is just a natural response from people towards trans individuals. And the one time that it does get turned around on a member of the family, on Brian, who is meant to be the representative of Seth MacFarlane himself, or at least what he considers his worst aspects as a liberal creator who wanks himself off over his progressive ideals, the comedy at Brian's expense also comes at the expense of Ida too, with it being reliant upon us agreeing that she tricked him and that sleeping with a trans woman is disgusting and a punishment for the character and his sleazy ways. Ida is not a dignified person in the situation who is getting attacked by people that we absolutely know are in the wrong and are bad people. It's a case of Ida still being the punchline in that situation, and it reflects a continual problem with her throughout the episode starting from even when the other people assume that she is a gay man because she enjoys more feminine stuff, and then just sees the transitioning as part of that gay man culture. That trans women are just a variant on gay men, who happen to transition so that they can engage in the seduction of straight men who would totally never fuck a dude, a big part of both classical gay and trans panics. That idea from straight men that everybody is out there trying to trick them into having sex with them, and that they can't trust gay people because they might just go for them in the toilets or the showers, and that they can't trust trans people because they infiltrate and look like women, just so that they can get that straight man dick. It's appalling, 
but it's not uncommon as a concept amongst guys, especially in the 2010s when How I Met Your Mother was doing the exact same thing with Ted Mosby and his fear of being tricked onto a date by a trans woman and that continues to this day as trans women are brutally attacked and murdered by men who fear that sleeping with them or being attracted to them makes them gay, or will have them perceived differently by their friends. Something which used to be defended in legal strategy by the trans panic attack. The idea that a man can't control himself when he finds out that he has slept with a trans woman, and that how he acts was not murder or assault because he was acting out of himself a claim of temporary violent insanity brought on by the frightening and offensive nature of the individual who is attacked. Something that continues to this very day in countries like the USA, where a majority of states have still not banned this defence from courtrooms. And that perception of deception, and the way that a cis person is putting it into their episode, an episode where presumably as a liberal progressive they think of themselves as being supportive of trans people, ties into another moment in trans TV history that I want to talk about in relation. And I know that by discussing it, that what I'm doing is removing the possibility of me covering this in its own video at some point, but uh, shit, I want to talk about it and so I will. And that is the infamous Tribal Council of Survivor Game Changers in 2017, when Jeff Varner outed Zeke Smith as a trans man to everybody in an attempt to showcase that there has been deceptions there, And that, in his own words, it proved Zeke was capable of deception. I don't want the perception to be that I'm this evil, hateful person. What was your goal in doing that? To show the deception. That isn't deceiving us strategically in a game. I don't think so. It reveals the ability to deceive. Both Family Guy and this survivor movement share the same thing, which is the view of trans people as inherently deceptive about who they are about how that lying and covering up of their identity is something okay to use against them, or to justify mockery slash revulsion. And like I mentioned, in both cases, we see that Jeff Varner and Seth MacFarlane don't view what they are doing or their actions towards trans people in these regards as being transphobic. Jeff Varner defends themselves by saying that they support trans people, and they believe they deserve all the rights in the same breath, that he's attempting to use transness as a way of attacking and throwing shade at somebody. And in the same vein, Seth MacFarlane defended the episode Quagmire's Dad by saying that it was, quote, a very sympathetic portrayal of a transsexual character, and that Brian happens to be a heterosexual character, as I am. If I found out that I had slept with a transsexual, I might throw up in the same way that a gay guy looks at a vagina and goes, oh my god, that's disgusting. Seth MacFarlane sincerely believes that what he did was a positive representation of transness, and an accurate one. And that comment and the other ones he made in that interview make it clear that the revulsion the characters feel towards Ida is not a joke on them, but is meant to be how we should feel they should respond. In both of these cases, What we are seeing is the cisgender attitude and the cisgender subconscious transphobia laid bare for all to see. And I don't think that such a thing goes uncommented on. Jeff Varner got reamed out by all the other contestants and the host and the vast array of survivor watchers for what he did, because it was so openly vile that it's impossible for the average person to not react negatively to it. In the same way, what Family Guy did here was so blatant that it could only have negative reactions from a lot of people, because it laid bare in clear and obvious terms the deep-seated bigotries that a lot of that cis audience might feel, but would never so openly admit to. And that's the piece that I want to seize on here. How the episode Quagmire's Dad does truly reflect the actual attitude from many people who consider themselves to be trans-supportive. The actual ideals of how they see a trans person removed from the niceties of progressive language and silencing themselves to be respectful. Like Survivor, like How I Met Your Mother, what it gives us is the problems that need to be addressed. Namely, that for many people at that time, trans women were seen in this dehumanising light, that considered them as merely gay men who went further with their effemininity and were tricking straight men by the fact that they looked like women. And that concept 
that concept that many audiences laughed along to, or at least said nothing about when it came up in those shows, because they either agreed with it, or they did not think it was worth thinking about or caring about, is one of the many roots of transphobia that continue to run in the system that we have built to this day. Many trans people still live in fear and worry because of those exact things, because of reactions and laws and people whose perceptions on them were influenced and reinforced by these exact episodes, and what those episodes reflected in the cisgender view of transness. And we need to understand that. We need to consider these terrible negative moments, because without considering them, we can't get the whole picture on how we got here, on how deep-seated this bigotry is that it can be so easily replicated in a casual manner within popular culture from just over a decade ago. The scars of this moment still bleed to this day. I do not think that Family Guy was instrumental in causing this attitude. I don't think you can point to this episode and say that it is a direct link to the trans violence and attacks that we're dealing with. But it is a mirror into the cis perceptions that are causing those issues, that are causing people who still think of themselves as defending or supporting trans people like Seth MacFarlane to reiterate and engage with ideologies that attack the trans community, that see modern trans identity as going too far, and demanding too much in the way of rights and respect. Popular culture is always intricately linked into people, and people's identities, being both formed from them and formative to them. It's created by people who have developed ideas and beliefs, who then pass those on with their own baggage to the viewers who incorporate that and process it themselves, and pass it on to those around them. Quagmire's dad is one of the worst moments of trans representation, because even in the positive aspect of the storyline between Ida and Quagmire, that humanises Ida and gives us a sympathetic perspective on her, even in that it dehumanises her by the reactions of all those around her, and by sandwiching such a moment between violent revulsion at her identity and literal violence between two cis men over that identity. It is terrible, because it points us as an audience towards accepting all these implicit bigotries around the trans character. Because it tells us that it's supportive, and that we are supportive of trans people, while at the same time planting and watering the very beliefs that will get trans women attacked and killed for who they are. It's kind of worse than many other representations that are openly violent or openly aggressive, because it isn't just vile, it isn't just some Republican propaganda crap that can clearly be denoted as anti-trans by the audience. It's created by people who see themselves on the right side of the trans issue, who see themselves as with the trans community because they vote Democrat, and they say the hashtags and the buzzwords, while at the same time they slide a knife into our back with how they comment on us and see us. So, that was a cheery video, wasn't it? And... Let's not say I didn't give you some fair warning about it, but I hope that you learned something from this, or that you took something away that might be helpful for considering popular culture from a trans perspective for yourself, or for others in your life. If you don't agree with the fact this was the worst trans moment, I can get that, because it's a subjective perspective, and there are many bad trans moments. I think it's definitely up there with the rest of them, and I think that what it leads to and what it represents for that time period is essential to understanding where we are now. And if you did like what I did here, that's great. And you can go and you can like, share, subscribe, comment, or go to Seth MacFarlane's house and throw toilet paper and eggs over it. Something which I actually don't advocate you doing, and I want to make it clear, is a joke. Please don't ban me YouTube. If you really like what I do, then you can consider becoming one of my super ultra deluxe supporters, or patrons as we call them, and give me the direct financial support that allows me to make these videos, and edit them with the safety of housing and food and electricity, which I am told are essentials that everybody can understand and relate to. See, us trans people are just like you. We have to deal with housing as well. I seriously can't thank these people enough, the ones scrolling on the screen right now, as they do truly inspire me to keep writing, recording, and uh, editing. God, I hate editing. Oh, and to cap this all off, let's make some 
bullshit promise thing that is completely unfeasible because I don't actually want to make that video. Like, if this hits a million views, then I will make an analysis of trans identity in South Park. I, I would do it, and I would go in there, and I would make that video, but I really don't want to because the last time I tried, I got too disgusted, I had to walk away from the show. But that's why I'm setting the promise at a million views. You know, think smarter, work less. Other than that, thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day.